Hi everyone, my name is Samantha. Thanks for being here, uh, virtually even. Uh, today I will be talking about the power of debugging and my idea is to not only show you a few tricks but how you can use these tools to go beyond just debugging. So my journey with debugging started several years ago back in college. Um, I didn't know coding before that and my professor's um, philosophy was mostly to teach us the abstracts of programming and not so much the tools. That meant that we were left to figure those things out by ourselves. So in my case, um, in the beginning I would use Notepad to program. And yeah, that meant doing everything manually. Now I'd love to say that it took me just a little bit to learn about all the other tools that I could use to make my experience easy, easier. But one year later I was still programming in Notepad and just with a different language. Back then when I didn't know what was happening with my app when there was a bug or it was just like exploding, not functioning at all, at all I would add a printf that is like an equivalent for console log and when I had like zero idea where my code was breaking I would literally just add printfs everywhere like one per line of code. Thankfully after a while I did learn about IDs and debugging tools and this was from the days that I would uh, code in .NET and use Visual Studio for debugging. One of the things that I miss the most about that debugger is being able to just skip, skip lines of code. Um, the browser still doesn't have it, I guess it's a difficult feature to have, but it was super helpful. Nowadays I'm a web developer mostly, so I spent most of my day, my working day, on the browser and the debugging tools that I use are the ones that come with the browser. Um, I also use the editor of course, but yeah, a lot of my time is spent here. So let's start um, with some of the challenges that I faced um, in like all my years coding and I will walk you through them and like we can see how the debugging tools help us through this. So one of the challenges that we usually face is mostly the difference between debugging or handling issues in development versus production. So in development you actually have access to the code and you can change things and um, sort of see how they behave and in production that's not, not as easy but we still have um, things we can do. So to demonstrate this I have a buggy app and let's say I have this application that is asking me a math question. I answer it and it's saying, oh, you have like, it's not the right answer. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. So if you've worked on this app and you know, probably where is the issue happening? So you would usually just go to um, like your editor and you go, okay, yes, I know um, this error is happening on this component. I can just add a debugger here and save and sort of start debugging. Oh, first I forgot to answer, that's where the error is happening. And yeah, you can step through the code, see why it's not working. Then I'm like, oh, actually, I shouldn't have parsed uh, the answer as an integer because it's not always going to be one. Then you can go back to your code, fix the issue and go on with your life. Another way to do this um, would be to just add a breakpoint on the actual source here on the browser. Now, if you've ever looked through the sources tab, of your Ember app, you will see that you have um, here like where your page is located and then you have an assets folder and this assets folder is going to have all the JavaScript and also CSS and other assets. But m what we care about here is mostly the JavaScript and you will find folders for the Ember framework that's like this Ember folder, Glimmer, 
Also, when we're testing, this add-on tree output folder will actually contain all the code for every add-on that ha you have included in your app. So if you never ever need to actually debug that code, you can just um, walk through there and open it and add breaking points. So let's say I hadn't put a breakpoint here, I had everything closed. You will find um, always a folder that has your app name in it and inside you will see all the app code mapped uh, pretty much as you see it on your computer in development. And I can just go where I know the issue is and also put a brain point. Answer. And yeah, we go back to like to the same point and we can see the same thing without having to change our code and reload the app. You can also find here a few other things that help you in debugging. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. But yeah, mostly you can watch uh, variables to see how, how they change. You can see where you close, like the stack trace. Um, here you can actually see the variables we have declared and you can even change their value. So let's say I want to make this code pass just because I want to continue working on the app and I just change it there. You can see the breakpoints and yeah, several other stuff. So here now I've changed my solution just so the code can pass and I yeah, just resume and hey, we can continue like working on the app. Now this is perfect and it's easy to see in production, in, sorry, in development, but the actual question is how do we find the same thing when we're in production and we don't have our code mapped that way. So let's see the same app opened in a production environment. If I go to the sources tab, I see the assets folder also, but I don't see like all the folders mapped. And I have four files here. Um, the one that has your app name and a fingerprint will be the one that has all the app code. So everything you developed. And you will see a vendors file that has all the framework code. So everything related to Ember, every add-on you have added, external libraries that may not be add-ons. And the same thing for the CSS, like you have one for your styles. So yeah, it was here, my styles. And you have one for styles that are added by add-ons. Like I don't have any here, so it's empty. Now, how do you find um, the code to debug here in production? You will see that even though it, this is a minify file and like, yeah, you don't actually have all the variable names, you still have some strings that name the um, modules that we have declared. So you can see, for instance, you can find um, the adapter. You can see here a component definition. Actually, this is a manager, <laughs> but here, a component. Um, if you want to see it in a nicer way, you can just um, click the predefy. Um, like, let's go back here. Um, this icon, and this will generate like a different tab that has the same code but printer nice, printed nicely so you can actually find it easier and debug it. So our issue here was happening in components so we can just search for the name of the component we want to debug. Now you will see a lot of this is initialization, initialization code. <laughs> That's a hard word. Um, and if we keep looking we will eventually find at the like our functions. Here you can see you have the evaluate answer and this is pretty much the same code we debugged before, um, just um, formatted differently. And we can also set a breakpoint there, just write this thing. And in this case, I can still access the variables. And let's say I want to just change this one to make the code pass. And I can just go set the value I want. And I know the comparison will work now. And I can just continue. Yeah, and that's how we can pretty much do the same thing we did in development, but here in production. So back to our slides, a small recap of this section. 
um, you can usually um, do all the debugging on the sources tab without changing your code. You can just set breakpoints there. You will find um, while you're in development the app structured pretty much as it is in your computer. You can access the scope section to view the value of the variables you have and also change them if you need to. And just remember that in production, the script will be all in one file, but you can do the pretty um, formatting and also debug there. So next, um, what happens when we have external libraries and how can we debug them? In case the issues, like sometimes the issues will not be your fault, they will be actually someone else's code. Um, yeah. Going back to our app, I'm going to remove the breakpoint here, close this. And I'm going to try to go to this level and I can see an error. Um, hmm. We look at the message, it's not, like we know it's happening in the route, but the message itself is not saying much. And yeah, the stack trace is not that helpful either. So Sometimes one of the issues that we have with Ember is that you will see a lot of the internal code in your stack trace and you may not actually find where the issue is beginning. But in this case, we know it is happening when we try to navigate to the route. So let's just open that route here. Mm -mm. There. Levels two. So here I have my model and I'm using, this is like the instance of an um, external library that I'm using to load the data. I can set a few breakpoints, like maybe it's failing when I initialize it, maybe it's failing there, maybe it's failing here, who knows. Now I'll step through it, that part works. Um, this is actually um, a promise, so I need to sort of continue. And my code is not actually stopping here, so I guess it's failing inside this method. So let's just try to step inside it. Here, so now we are on the actual um, definition of the function on the library. And we can step through it. And oops, now I find found the issue. It's not like something on my code. So I can just go to like the GitHub of that person and say, hey, you have a bug. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Like, yes, you can do that, but <laughs> let's just see what are other options we have here. Um, one of the things that I can do on the sources tab is actually change the code um, and save it. And this will allow me to try um, this function as without change. So I commented that line that was throwing the exception and I can just skip it. Yeah, and now I get the results I wanted. Cool. So one thing um, that I would like to point out here is the difference between add-ons and external libraries. Like this is an NPM library that I'm importing through Ember Auto Import and here like on the sources tab, I will find it below this little cloud that says Ember Auto Import. And like the difference is add-ons, I will actually found, find them in this other folder. But you can still see like the code of both uh, type of libraries. So yeah, like if you want to debug any of these other libraries, you can just open them at a breakpoint somewhere and see what happens if you're curious to see how something works. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for this case. Let's go back to our slides. Oops, there. <laughs> so just to recap, um, yeah, sometimes you will find issues that are not exactly on the code, but on third party libraries, and don't be afraid to step in them. Like this was a very simple example, but sometimes 
it will help you find where the actual error is, com error is coming from. So, for instance, this talk um, was inspired because we had a similar problem in production where we were interacting with a third party library and the error message that we were getting was not helpful, um, at least not for them. Like they couldn't reproduce the issue we were having, but we didn't know exactly what was the original error. And we had to sort of pair debug from someone else's computer while having the code in production. And by using both the formatting of um, the Ember code and then being able to step on the actual library, we managed to find the original error message. And that's something we could use to actually contact like the third party library that was used by another third party library and give them the information they needed to fix the issue. So um, sometimes you will step into code that will look weird to you. Um, you don't have to understand it. Like I don't understand most of the code I stepped into that is not mine, but um, you may still find the information you need even if you don't really um, understand the code or you don't really get to fix the issue. Um, you can edit on site, just as I did if you want to try something. Um, yeah, like change the code a little bit. Maybe you want like something is failing at a specific point, but you actually need to see what happens afterwards. Yeah, like this can work. Also, just remember the difference between where the add-on code lies versus the NPM library code. Now, the third challenge I want to walk you through today is what happens when you have an app and someone reports an issue, but that's not something you actually developed. It happens a lot, I guess, in every developer's life that you end up um, coding in an app that you didn't start it from scratch. And sometimes, especially when you're new in a project, that can be like super hard to figure out, um, especially because people really want to fix you, you to fix the issue and you're like, where do I start? So let's go back to the app. I'm going to go through my third example here. Now let's say I have this memory game, um, like I think, I don't know if you all know it, but it's basically you have to like guess or remember where the cars were. And when you have two that fail, we actually want them to like turn back as they did, but don't we don't want them to like take that long, really, like because we cannot do anything. So if, let's say your manager comes and says, yeah, I have this issue. I don't know why it's happening, but I want it fixed by yesterday. <laughs> You're like, oh, I actually didn't develop this thing. Now, um, we have the Ember Inspector, and one thing that I like to use it for is learning a new app. Um, especially this view is very helpful because even if you don't, will, like, you don't know straight away where things are, you can at least see what components make this thing. And you can actually start to figure out where you should start looking for like possible issues. So here I know I have like my route and then link to that's not what is happening. I mean, it's not related, I guess. Then I have a big component called memory game and several memory cards components. One cute thing that I figured out just recently is that you can actually click here and you will be taken to like that instance of the component. This, the Ember Inspector has a lot of helpful tools. I won't walk you through them today, but you can find other talks and actually the guys that have a lot, has, have a lot of information. Um, yeah, so you, ca you can learn how to use these tools. They're very helpful. So now I know how my components are called and I can, for instance, say, mm, I have a, a feeling that the memory game is the one that is causing us issues. So I can go to the sources tab again and I can go to components and open memory game. And yeah, all this initialization code, I can see the template here. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see. I can see my properties being initialized and 
mm, I continue looking and then mm, I have a hint, like I have a function here called, called card click that receives a card. So I'm going to add a debugger here and see what happens. So yeah, now I'm checking that the unflip card, mm, funny name, uh, is not running. I'm comparing two cards, I only have one. I set it to flipped. I set my flip card to it. Then I ask if the game passed. So yeah, that works fine. Now I have this unflip card. And it steps through it and I can see that the cards didn't match and I got um, to call this task and this is a number concurrency task um, yeah this is just a, a hint like I sort of know some of these um, properties and I sort of mm, I think this is a, a task and we can try like stepping into it whenever you step into this is actually um, Ember code for getting um, like when you get to need to get property of something so like we're getting this task from the component we don't want to actually step into that so we can step out and go back yeah I mean, we don't want to go for that one either now if you try to again step into it you will actually be taken to code that is for ember concurrency now the thing is we won't really see um like where the task is fine but I really want to actually debug the task itself, not Ember concurrency code in this case. So I'm just going to put a debugger here. And one way to do this, because we can try to find um, this monthly cards function. And yeah, it's like I cannot find the actual code. Um, so when it's like you're fi having a hard time finding the actual definition of a function, you can use this thing that the Chrome tools do is like you take, um, like here is the task and the actual function for the task is this one. And whenever you have a function, you will add the function location and a link to the actual file. So we can click there and now I can actually debug that one. And yeah, now I see, oh, actually we have this big number here. Like we probably want to, to have half a second, not five seconds. Now, if we want to, as we did before and just edit it. Yeah, we go back. We try it mm, and it's not, not really working. Now, the reason why this doesn't work as it did when we changed um, the other case is because this file is actually, the source map is not the actual JS file for your app. Now, how do we find the actual JS file? Like, let's close Ember. Let's close this one. Now here, you will fi find um, a JS file with your app's name. If you open it, you will see that it's similar to what the one we saw in production, but actually um, not minified. And you can also find um, this memory card component here. Mm, memory game, sorry. So it's the same code. And this thing, like if we want to debug this one, you'll notice that it will take you to um, the source map file. That is because it's actually easier for you to debug that one. But if you want to actually make changes to just try it out, you need to do it on the whole file. So we should find that big number we want to change. So here we have the task. We can try changing it. And then now you see, like we can actually see it work. Okay. So a small recap. Um, use the inspector, like there's a lot of information you can get from your app from there and it will help you, especially in the beginning of a project that you don't know to figure out the models you have, the structure of a page and a lot of other things. 
uh, if you don't know where a function is defined and you have a hard time um, figuring it out, but you do have access to the instance, you can always go to the function location. And remember that if you need to edit something to just try it out, you should, you should do it on the actual app file and not on the source map. Now other talks that you can um, see that will have a lot more information related also to debugging and also to Ember debugging are listed here. Also, um, don't forget to read the guides. There's a lot of information there, both for um, Chrome tools, Firefox tools, and the inspector. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, again, my name is Samantha. I'm a software developer from Simplabs and hope you had a nice time.